Hello everyone, my name is Richard from Home Tech Video. In this video we're going to go over some of the basic settings and the layout design of Blue Iris. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. The uh, first thing I want to go over is your cameras window. Now this window is going to show you all of your live view of every camera that you have um, and this is going to show you what's going on currently. If you click on any of these cameras and go and hit right click you can bring up the camera properties in camera properties you're changing the settings of the individual camera that you have selected in this case my PTZ which is my pan tilt zoom camera uh, the settings that I can change in here are numerous uh, we're gonna get into these in depth in another video um, the next thing that you can do on the uh, cameras view tab is you can make these cameras uh, maximize pretty easily so when you have a camera selected if you go down here to the solo selected camera button when I have a camera uh, clicked on it's going to make that camera maximize and it's going to stay that way to exit out of this view go down here into a gray space and just click one time and it'll bring you back to all of your cameras you can do this with any of them click on a camera make it maximized and then click back here in a gray area now this is only going like I said this function is only going to work when you have the solo selected camera button down here in the bottom uh, checked or when it's green if it is not checked and you select and you click on a camera it's not going to do anything it's just going to highlight that camera that you have selected the uh, second thing I want to go over is the timeline down here now this is going to be your recorded video I'm going to get into this a little bit later on how to browse your recorded video but um, on the bottom anytime that you see let me zoom in here. This right here is motion detected on any of the cameras. So these little guys right here. So this is when a motion detection has started on any of the cameras and motion was detected all the way up to this point. Now on my particular setup I have all of my cameras recording 24-7. There is no start stop. Um, but if I want to see something that happened or if I'm trying to review a bunch of video from a long period of time I know that from example from here to here none of my cameras detected any motion whatsoever so if I'm trying to find a specific event or something that happened it makes it a little bit easier to jump around because I know that during this period of time right here there was motion and then I don't have to watch any video here unless the motion detection settings on the cameras are not sensitive enough but I know that there was motion here and there is motion here at 1.53 p.m. and then over here at 1, 1.51 p.m. So I'm going to get into the timeline and how to review video uh, in depth in another video. The second thing, or the third thing I'm going to go over is clips. Now this is something I don't really mess around with much because you can access all your video clips from this timeline down here at the bottom. You can, um, it shows you all of the recorded clips in the uh, time frame that you have selected for how long the videos are going to record for. So I'll get into this in a little bit depth later on, but all of the clips and playback is a lot easier, like easily accessible from the uh, timeline down here at the bottom, which I'll go over in a another video. Uh, next part is the uh, top section, all these buttons. The uh, one to the very far left is your camera properties button. This does the exact same thing as if you clicked on a camera and right clicked and hit on camera properties. Button over here from this is going to be options. Now this is your global options for all of your settings, not individual camera settings. This is something I don't really recommend getting into and playing around with much because you can mess up some settings. And uh, if you mess up in here, it's going to be really hard to trace back and figure out how to fix the problem if you don't really know what you're doing. But I definitely will cover all of these uh, in detail in, a, in another video. Uh, next thing is going to be remote access. Again, this is going to be the same thing like your options, your global options. Once this is set up, you don't have to set this up again, but remote access basically allows you to set up um, quickly uh, being able to access the cameras from any type of smartphone or um, computer remotely when you're away from the house. Next thing is going to be status. Now, if you notice, my status bar is red. Um, this means that there's a recent event or an alert that happened. If I click on it, it'll tell me what it was, which was restarted after unexpected shutdown, which was expected to actually restarted the program. I force closed it earlier, so that's normal, but it at least lets me know that there is a, an event that happened if you want to be aware of it. Um, once you check it, it goes back to not being lit up anymore. 
Uh, these next two buttons are snapshot and record stop start. Not something that you're going to mess around with much um, unless you want to for some reason. But basically if you have a camera selected like the uh, pan tilt zoom camera here and I click on image or snapshot, it's going to save over here the image or uh, the picture that was happening at that time when you clicked it. Um, I have my cameras recording 24-7 so these two buttons really don't need to use at all. The next thing over here is your traffic signal. Now what your traffic signal does is it stops all your cameras from recording um, altogether. So right now my traffic signal is red, which means that none of my cameras are recording. If I click on it, it'll go to the yellow status, and then if you look down here at the bottom, it says going live in 25 seconds. It basically gives me a countdown. I have the delay set for 30 seconds, so after 30 seconds, then all of my cameras will start recording. But um, it'll stay yellow for another 15 seconds, and then you notice all of my cameras around the borders where it's white will go red and there's going to be a little icon in the uh, top right corner of each of the cameras that will uh, be like a little red dot showing you that they're all recording which is going to happen now. So now all of my cameras are recording. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to show you in this video is the profiles tab. Now this is um, pretty handy if you want to set up. I'm going to get this into great detail in another video but the two things I wanted to show you right now is the uh, inactive profile if I click this, basically what it does is it shuts down all of the cameras temporarily. Now this is a really handy feature for when you're reviewing um, clips or if you're trying to compress and export a video because with all of the cameras going and trying to do that, it uses a lot of um, CPU processing power. So once you have your clips selected, you can go ahead and hit this button, temporarily turn off your cameras, and it frees up CPU usage. Um, if you notice right here, my CPU usage is currently at 15%. If I turn on all of my cameras, give it a second before it to load up, you'll see my processor go up to, usually it hovers around 50%, which is normal. Now, um, Blue Iris is a very processor heavy program, so never use your computer for any other task other than recording. Um, it is completely normal for your processor um, percentage-wise to stay up to 75%, so there's no need to worry about like that if it's at 75% or hovering in the uh, mid-50s range, so that's perfectly normal. But that basically wraps it up, wraps it up for this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out my other videos. I'm going to get into great detail on all of the other features. Thank you all for watching.